Welcome to another Electronics and More video. In today's video I'm going to show you a very simple device that you can make to assist you if you are an electrician or someone who likes to work on residential wiring. The device you see here is designed for 120 volts but you can also modify the circuit which I'll show you later so you can use this with 240 volts if desired. What this does it makes it very easy for you to identify branch circuits branch circuits that are not properly marked at the circuit breaker panel. So you may have an electrical receptacle in a bedroom and you go to turn it off where the panel says bedroom but the receptacle does not go off. And we know how it normally works. You have an assistant stand in the bedroom, they look at the lamp and then they holler to you when you find the correct circuit breaker. This could pose a problem if you're an electrician and you're working on a job because you may not have an assistant. So you're going to want to identify the circuit really easy without the use of an assistant and that is where this comes in very handy. What you do is you take this device, if it's an electrical receptacle, you pull this apart and you plug this into the receptacle that you would like to work on. Once you plug this in, this loud piezo alarm is going to sound and it is very loud. Once the alarm sounds, you can then go to the electrical panel and then turn off the circuit breakers one by one until the piezo alarm goes off. You will then know the circuit is off and you can work on it. If you do not have access to the receptacle because there is a lamp plugged in or you would like to turn off the power to a ceiling fan which has bulbs in it, what you could do is you take the socket to outlet adapter Take the device that you made and then you plug it into this and then you screw it into that socket. Once it's screwed in, you turn on the light switch and then the siren will sound and then you can go to your circuit breaker panel and turn off one breaker at a time until you find the correct breaker. This makes life so much easier. You don't have to bother anybody and you can get the job done all by yourself. It beats carrying around a radio to plug into an outlet to let it run so you can find the right breaker. It beats having somebody standing there yelling to you back and forth. It's really a great thing to have. Now to make this it's very simple. You can go out and buy this adapter right here. It's only about $1.99. If you're in Europe then you could use a 220 volt version of this. Over here this is polarized. One blade is wider. That indicates neutral. One blade is narrower and that is the hot and then it converts to an electrical socket this would normally thread into this all the way down and then you could place a bulb inside so this is a socket to receptacle adapter and they're around $1.99 as well the parts you're going to need let me show you the schematic the schematic you see here is for 120 volts that's your line you need a 200 milliamp fuse that's going to flow through a 0.5 microfarad or close to it 275 volt nonpolar capacitor make sure it's rated at least 275 volts from there it goes into a bridge rectifier which you can make out of four 1N4007 diodes the neutral side has a 510 ohm resistor and that's rated at a half of a watt this limits the inrush and the 0.5 microfarad capacitor reduces the current flow to the entire circuit. On the negative output of the rectifier, it goes into the negative of an electrolytic capacitor, which is 25 volt rated, 100 microfarads. Positive goes into the positive side of the element, and the negative goes into the negative side of the element. 5 volts, the one that I used is... TRIE 1205P. You could pick those up on eBay, they're very inexpensive. The reason why you want active is because when a voltage is applied to this piezo element, the sound will come out of it. If you purchase a passive one, then it's going to require a transistor circuit to create the tone which you're going to hear coming out of the element. So you definitely want to purchase an active element. The only purpose of the 200 milliamp fuse is in the event that the 0.5 microfarad capacitor becomes shorted, the current will surge, blowing the fuse. 
Very, very rare does that happen, and I have yet to ever see one of these capacitors with all of the circuits I made on my channel fail to blow the fuse. So make sure you use a 0.5 microfarad, 275 volt. If you're going to be using this for a 240 volt circuit, make sure you use a 400 volt rated capacitor to 600 volt rated capacitor. Do not use anything less than 400 and you're going to want to take this resistor here, the 510 ohm, and increase that to 1 watt. Once those changes are made, the circuit will work fine if you're using a European style socket. What I'm going to do now is show you how I soldered the circuit inside the socket. Okay, to get started, you're going to need a socket adapter. Right here is a US one, this is 120 volts. If you live in Europe, you're going to be using a different style for 240 volts. You can see both of the blades, one is larger, one is smaller, the larger one is the neutral, and the narrower, smaller one is the hot. You're also going to need a 200 milliamp fuse like you see here. You could probably get by in a 100 milliamp as well. You're going to need a non-polar capacitor. This is a 0.51 microfarad, 250 volt. This is a half watt, 510 ohm resistor. This is your piezo element. It's a 5 volt element. And you can see it's a TRIE 1205P, easily available on eBay. This is a full wave bridge rectifier that I made out of four 1N4007 diodes. Lastly, you're going to require a 100 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitor. Let me clear all this out of the way. I'm going to be using vice grips to hold this in the upright position as I solder the components inside the socket. You can see the curved brass tab, that is the hot terminal, and the other terminal running up the side of the socket is the neutral. The first thing we're going to be doing is applying solder to that center tab. Perfect. That one is all set. Now we're going to be doing the other side. If you would like to see the product review video I made for the soldering iron, you can click on the link you see right here. A new window will open which you can pause and then you can press play after you finish completing this video. And you can see that side now has solder on the neutral side. The next step, I'm going to be soldering the fuse to the capacitor. When it's complete, it should look like what you see right here. Now I'm going to position the capacitor with the fuse inside the socket and solder the wire to the center terminal. And just touch it and it should flow together. There we go. Let that cool off. The next step, I'm going to solder the 510 ohm half watt resistor to the neutral side of the socket. You should have no problem fitting all these components inside the socket. All right, let me position that resistor and solder it in place. Here's a closer look with the light from the soldering iron. Allow that to cool a few seconds before continuing. The next component I'm going to be installing is the bridge rectifier. When installing all the components, make sure you leave adequate spacing of the leads you do not want anything shorting out. The twisted wire sticking up in the back of the image, I'm going to be folding down. That is the positive which is going to connect to the piezo buzzer 
with the electrolytic capacitor. The next thing you're going to do is take the 5 volt piezo buzzer, solder it to the electrolytic capacitor. Once it's soldered together, you can then position the piezo buzzer inside the socket and solder it to the bridge rectifier. When completed, before the epoxy is poured in, it should look like what you see right here. Once you have the circuit completely assembled inside the socket like you see here, you can then take some Loctite epoxy. This is the five minute setting, the quick set, and it's translucent but it does have a little bit of an amber cast to it. Whatever epoxy you use, make sure it is not conductive. Mix both parts together into a little plastic cup, put this on a flat surface like that, and then you're going to pour the epoxy inside, tap it up and down to get the air bubbles out, and let it set up. Let me give you a quick demonstration. I'm going to take this, plug it into an electrical receptacle, and then you're going to hear how loud the piezo alarm is. Here is a receptacle I would like to either replace or tap into, but I have no idea which circuit breaker it's on. So I'm going to plug this in. Now I can go to the panel, turn off circuit breakers one by one. When I hear this go off, then I know I found the correct circuit. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.